This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Good morning and welcome back to Farm Factor on Ag AM in Kansas. I'm your host, Conrad Cabus. The Feed the Future Innovation Lab at Kansas State University was recently awarded $50 million as a grant for research. Gary Pazinski is a researcher for the project and describes the need for more people to be on the program. Uh, we do have a fair amount of staffing that we have to do to get the lab up and running. Uh, Dr. Prasad is the uh, director. Um, I would say with absolute certainty that if, we, if it weren't for his reputation with USAID and his international work, we never would have received this, uh, this grant. Then we'll be hiring additional personnel. Some will be based here at Kansas State. And then there will be three key positions that uh, are in uh, three of the six tar target countries. We call those regional coordinators. And they will be people who will interact with uh, the researchers who are doing the projects and helping to ensure the projects are successful. Uh, more importantly, they'll be interacting with some of the national agricultural research organizations in, in the target countries and actually working with uh, farmers uh, to try and extend the knowledge that we obtain in, in the research that will be done by the Sustainable Intensification Lab as well as existing knowledge that uh, is already out there with, that would allow the farmers to produce more food on, on the same land base. A big concern is food spoilage. One third of the food produced in the United States is wasted anyway. In developing countries, food spoilage is mostly caused by inappropriate storage techniques. Kansas State actually has four Feed the Future innovation labs, and one of them is specifically targeted at what we call post-harvest losses. Here in the U.S., most of that food spoilage is fruits and vegetables and prepared foods that don't get consumed and go bad and, and are thrown away. Uh, that's also true in developing countries, but in addition, they don't have the means to store staple crops such as corn grain, sorghum, rice, uh, wheat, uh, because uh, it, it'll mold uh, or get uh, um, insects and, and, and mice and other uh, vermin into them, and it'll literally, literally uh, rot in, in place. So they can't even store their staple foods for long periods of time to, to have that extended food supply. I've seen myself in Niger, um, uh, sorghum storage that was basically a thatch uh, container with a thatch roof, um, and they put whole sorghum heads in there, and that was their means of storage. And you know, that's just inviting mold and other uh, ways for that grain to decompose uh, over time. Uh, they don't have the means to build a nice uh, steel grain bin with an aeration floor and, and thrash the grain prior to, to putting it in there. Uh, so those solutions aren't even practical for them. But yet there are things that they can do that will help preserve uh, their food for longer periods of time and, and therefore uh, be available to market uh, as well as be available for their own uh, consumption. This is the fast track to more jobs and America's energy independence. Advanced performance is here now. Biodiesel, America's advanced biofuel. 